Hello, and welcome to another episode of World of Tanks Replays, with myself. Um, and this is probably the first one I've recorded in, I don't know, a very long time. But even so, this won't be uploaded for at least another couple days, since I am currently at a location where I will get an awful upload speed. And I really don't want to have my computer just sitting there being useless for 24 hours while everybody else can't use the internet, obviously. Um, because the internet here isn't very good. But anyways, um, we're here in the Type 58, and it is a Winterberg battle. I played this game like an hour ago, and I figured this was definitely worth a sharing. A, hmm, a sharing, I don't, hmm, definitely worth a share, I guess would be how you technically say it. But anyways, so we start up here, it is an encounter battle, so we are going to hang around in the eastern half of the map because that's where we as medium tank can do a better job um, even though there aren't a lot of heavies I would prefer not to go into the city and then just get derped in the face by the SU-152 or just absolutely mauled by the KV-13 um, interesting that it didn't remember the team listings but it remembered all of my tank labeling settings whatever um, so we're gonna come over to the middle, see if there's anything that tries to pop over an active scout. So let's pop back into our fixed camera view here. And there's Jaffe. Let's take a quick shot at him. And I see that there's a Lorian 155, so I'm just gonna wiggle a little bit here. Because I really don't want to just get shot by the artillery and get taken out at the beginning of the game. Because that has happened to me on this map before. And it's really annoying. Um, so yeah. For the beginning of the game here, what we're going to just try to do is just assert control over this little middle area here. On this ridge. Because if you're clever about it, you can... Um, you can put shots into the sides of all those guys on the right and then anybody like that Chaffee goes on the left you can also maybe have a shot at as well so we're gonna we're trying to get and see the sides of some of these vehicles over here making sure the entire time that we are covered from any tank destroyers now luckily for me two of their tank destroyers are down on the left rather to be as opposed to being back by the houses put a shot into the Panzer IV there and I can barely see his idler wheel and I track him so he's not in a good situation and I will finish him off as he's stuck there because I shot his idler wheel there's an Amex 40 but that's not gonna pen, oh, M5 will do M5 doesn't want to get out of the way, I get a really crappy damage roll, don't get the kill yeah but that's fine, I'm not that concerned check if I can shoot the T-3045 M that is and then we need to start worrying about these tank destroyers because it doesn't look like our team is having much fun trying to deal with them just pop a shot at him he was getting too far below the hill there couldn't really shoot him there's Covenanter give him some damage as well Chaffee's fleeing over there he Pulls to the right, I don't compensate, whatever I miss. And then the Covenanter is trying to escape. That shot hits, as we see. And he's going to still try to escape. <laughs> he will just throw a shot in that direction, and hey, it kills him. Uh, the SU-152 is now pulled forward, so that means I can advance with somewhat safety. But T-3045M needs to be taken out first, so let's put one into his thin side and then finish him off so the SU-100 is still somewhere I'm not quite sure if he's gonna sit there or if he has the 122 and he's just gonna pop me in the face so that's why I'm being a little cautious here because I don't really want to lose 400 health there's a T-34 let the gun aim I will gladly trade 85 damage for 160 damage any day And now he's just paying attention to somebody else. Nobody else wants to kill this guy for some reason, so I will gladly kill him. Um, and now we're on four kills, and the match is 
a little bit in their favor now because, well, it's actually fairly in their favor. They have the cap and they have the numerical strength. So this isn't exactly the greatest situation. I'm going to look over around this corner to make sure that there is no SU-152 waiting to dirt me. There is not. So what we really need to do is we need to make a push down the middle because we know that their tank destroyers are on the other side of the map. So if there's any time to go down this long death alley, it's right now. Because we do have to go reset that cap. So I'm just going to pull up into here. There's their artillery, interestingly enough. Pop a shot at him. And let's get onto the corner here. So you can be a little more effective popping in and out. There is the Chinu. Pop a shot at him. Let our gun reload. He bounces. And we'll just sit here to let the gun finish reloading. And boom, he's done. So we're on five kills. And we've now reset the cap a little bit, like one or two points for that Chinu. Missed that Chaffee. And then there's the uh, SU-100 as well. Both of them seem to have cap points. The SU-100 just got reset though, so the Chaffee has the vast majority here. But I can't really go reset the Chaffee until I hit the SU-100. And of course, RNG is being really obnoxious and he's just not letting me hit that SU-100. Um, Chaffee's really tempting his fate by popping out. I'm tempted to wait for the Chaffee, but he's being pretty smart with his popping out, and I'm just not getting the timing on my reloads for that. And then KV-13 appears, and he's an idiot, and he faces his side to me. So I'll put out the fire, just kill him. I'm at Top Gun now. I'll just put that shot on the move, and oh. Well, the SU-100 has the little 85, so um, I'll just kill him too. <laughs> And now, eight kills. And my friend is an Amex 13 AM, who is about to get killed. So, <laughs> I have to kill an SU-152 and a lower A15550. One eight kills. I considered going after them, but then I thought, oh, the SU-152 is probably going to be heading this direction, so I'm only just going to run to him front on if I keep doing what I'm doing right now. So I'm going to go and pull back behind this and let him approach me. I can use this as cover. I can pop in and out of these little divots, and even if he does have a shot, he'll be shooting my turret. I mean, that'll probably still be a kill because high explosive, but it makes it a very small target, and that gun does not hit small targets. So we're just going to wait here. Looking down that lane first. And we wait for his approach. As you see, I have my second shell queued up as an APCR shell. And of course, the first one bounces. And the APCR bounces. <laughs> because I clearly wasn't trying to aim for his lower plate. I definitely wanted to just shoot his troll plate over and over again was definitely the intention. So I'm just going to sit here, wait for him to get a little closer before I try popping out again. And there we can find there's this tiny little nook. And boom, shot into his lower plate. So now he's a one shot with decent luck. So we're going to try to pop out quickly. And of course, my shot hits the troll plate. But he doesn't realize that his vehicle can't turn. And he just drives straight past me. So I'm able to finish him off, but this still isn't the best situation since, well, the Lorraine 155 could easily one-shot me. 73 health isn't going to help against 900 damage high explosive. So I'm kind of moving around here just in case I'm still spotted for a little bit. And I was going to take up position here since he was going to probably fire blind shots at the position behind the fountain because that's where you kind of assume somebody is so I was sitting on a more of a less obvious space here also gives me pretty good cover so just waiting waiting for contact and I figure eh, he might come from the other direction and also if he does come from that direction I'd prefer to be engaging in a longer range so I sit behind this dead chinu here and I wait, and he's on the left. 
and his shot misses, he fires it on the move. Of course, my shot misses. And then this next little section is just stupid. I sit here. Aim. Fire. What? Where? Where did that shot go? <laughs> and oh, Pete's turn. <laughs> Please hit. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Pools Metal. Um, yeah, I just won that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I probably shouldn't have won that. But hey, ten kills, I'll take it. Victory, I'll take it. <laughs> And uh, we'll go to the after action report now. After action report being recorded uh, two and a half weeks late. But anyways, I figured that I wouldn't just cut the video and not and leave this part out. I would have it anyways. I'm just gonna do it with photo viewer sitting here, whatever. Um, so yes, uh, this was the game. Very very good game that came out of nowhere in Type 58. For a good 1,602 experience without the premium account at all. No bonuses, straight up. <laughs> 1,602. Uh, we managed to pick ourselves up a Ace Tanker badge as long as well as a Pools Medal, Top Gun, High Caliber, Defender, and I believe that is a De La, De La Gaulds Medal. Um, for, I believe, killing two tank destroyers of a higher tier, I'll. Don't quote me on that, but it's something somewhat impressive. Um, and as you see in our uh, little uh, damage column over here, we hit things a lot of times and did a lot of damage. And yeah, so when you go over the team score, you see that in a tier 6 vehicle, tier 7 game, we managed to pull 3,200 damage out of this little rip-off T-3485. And of course, 10 kills, 5 medals. Uh, very, very good game. And the detailed report, once again, reiterating, 3,219 damage, accomplished with 37 shots. Not really anything blocked by armor, I'm a medium, don't really have armor. And 11 damage, 10 destroyed. Um, so that's about it for this uh, and the type for this uh, episode. Um, all in all, Type 58 was actually not as painful as I thought it would be to grind, as I thought it would be to grind through. Um, it's so similar to the T3485 that I didn't even notice the 20 penetration difference, because it seems to have slightly better gun handling. I know it has a better rate of fire, but DPM still about the same. But it it's really just as comfortable as the T-3485 is. T-3485 is absolutely better, but no problem with this vehicle either. And I apparently figured it out and managed to do very well on it. Um, so that'll be it for this episode, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.